Now, you feel good being a teen nowadays, and maybe like a lot of your teachers, or our teachers for that matter, say you have to grow up and that's what I'm teaching you about. So you better listen just to be lucky that it ain't the 1600s. Because you see, you're gonna grow up fast early in early America. And they didn't have cell phones. They didn't even know what a cell phone was. Or any type of device for that matter. But one good thing is that they got to hold guns! Yep. <clears throat> so they can protect their families and a lot of responsibility was put on them at this time. So let's learn about teenagers in early America from the Daily Card section in Story of America. In colonial America, there were not really any teenagers as we know them. Of course, children passed through the decade that we know as the teens, but that stage of their lives was not the carefree, extraordinary period that today's youth experience. Children grew up into adulthood more quickly than they do today, and by the time a child entered their teen years, they already are on the path towards their life's occupation. Although a young's path to adulthood depended on the family's social economical status, regardless of wealth, young men usually learned their trade through some from a appreciation ship, too. This is what I was reading from a website called teachinghistory.org says about the children in early America. But now, let's see what the card says. In a sense, there were no teenagers in early America. That is, there were no identifiable group of young people for certain ages who tend to act, dress, and speak in ways that were markedly different from our other ages groups. It was not common for boys and girls to marry around the age of 16 years old, which in some cultures today still do, but I wouldn't say get married. Like, I know in Japan, from what I looked it up, that two people can get engaged. The boy has to be 18 years old and the older. And while a girl must be at least 16 years old or older as well. And back to early America. Young married people were expected to act like adults, not a teenager. Thus, most young people matured from child to adult without experiencing in the, the in-between years. The New England Chronicles were... I'm in New England colonies, so what am I doing? I'm not going back and finishing that. Fight me. Well, what I was saying, in general, were strict with their children. And especially for those in their teens, young boys had to sit on this le on one side of the church on Sundays, for instance, while girls sat on the other side. In the South, teenagers, boys and girls, especially those from wealthier families, became a walking models of etiquette to each school in the similarity endless ways of proper behavior. Perhaps the closest thing to a teen group in colonial times was found among the Dutch in New York City during the 18th century. The Dutch colonists generally allowed their teenage sons and daughters a good deal of freedom. They mixed socially held sledding parties and, or picnics in the country, played golf, and bowled on the green. This means you're playing bowling on the on grass, basically, in the straight line, like a quartet or something like that. Just want to point that out. Teenage boys of Dutch ascent 
descendants were even noted for skipping school and otherwise defying authority. Typical teenage stuff. These teenagers were fortunate that young adults in colonial America had only hard work to look forward to. They were children of poor farm families who often had to begin working in the fields or at home as soon as they learned how to walk. The years between childhood and marriage were marked only by longer years and harder work. There was no other way for a family to survive during these harsh times. As America grew and prospered, however, customs changed, young people began to marry later, and thus had more time to enjoy teenage years. An improved economic situation provided them with more free time, and they were not forced to assume the burdens of adulthood so quickly. Perhaps teenagers' years in early America were typified best on one young colonial girl, envisioned during the late 1700s. Stitched into a simpler, she may or three stages of life, she saw them as as a baby in her cradle, as a young woman sewing for her family, as an old woman lying dead in her coffin. And that was teens back in early America, so probably lucky that you were born in the 21st century in the late 1900s. Am I right? So this is where I am heading off for today, like for more, I'll see you next time.